This is the city. Jarring, vibrant, alluring, dangerous. Warm and alive, cold and heartless, all at once. It's a story of the people, the structures, and the spaces between them. Cities are steeped in inequality. When you look at the physical spaces, it's obvious. Inner city schools with deteriorating buildings, the culture and ecology of the Duwamish River paved over by industry, and new high-end developments forcing families out of homes they had lived in for generations. I think Seattle as a city is being threatened. I mean, there's no question. I-5 is a prime example. It cuts this neighborhood into two. The impact that it has on this neighborhood, it's, it's huge. This exact site, there were 30 shots fired from two cars on this site. There are casings all over the ground. That didn't make any news in Seattle. Injustice comes in many forms. Towards people, they can manifest as exclusion, unfair procedures, and legacies of disinvestment. I do a lot of work with people with compromised abilities, physical or cognitive abilities. If a park is designed such that they don't have access to it, there's an injustice served to that population. Injustice on the environment is experienced through contamination, depletion of resources, and severe manipulation of the landscape. As people and the environment are inseparable, social and environmental justice inevitably go hand in hand. You may already be aware of these inequalities. You may have even accepted them as a fact of life. But the truth is, it doesn't have to be this way. In fact, one field is actively addressing injustice from the ground up, landscape architecture. Landscape architecture is the practice of designing spaces and systems which integrate people and the environment through thoughtful intervention. It has many facets and approaches ranging from ecological infrastructure to design activism. Skills such as engaging communities, harnessing the potential of plants to treat toxic sites, and creating photorealistic images and models immerse communities in what could be rather than settling for what is. As an interdisciplinary field, landscape architecture plays a key role in fighting social and environmental injustices through the built environment. Planners and designers work with communities of color or low-income communities. They always think, oh, let me help you because I have the expertise, I have the knowledge, I have the skills, I have the degree, and I have the experience. But that's something that we try to be very careful with balancing because, yes, you may have all of the above, but you don't actually live that life. Um, you're not in the neighborhood more than those people who are living in that neighborhood. And so a lot of times you really have to, you know, let go of, of all of those biases that you have and, and really listen to your constituents and not just listen, but engage, right? Build those relationships, build those trust, incorporate people's lives into it, um, the stories, the experiences. Not erode equity in a neighborhood, so it should be actively aware of the processes of gentrification and it should really be counterbalanced. And I think, um, you know, activism is um, a long process of educating, a long process of cultivating, and a long process of patience. Given the broad scope of landscape architecture, what does this look like in action? it became apparent that certain people living in certain neighborhoods had less access to open space, green space. So obviously, from a policy standpoint, it would be to look for land closer to those communities, build parks equal to what other communities have. On a much smaller scale, it can be as simple as who actually has access to a site. Even in the projects I do that I think I get a foot in the door, there are compromises to be made. And the question is, how much of a compromise do you have to make and does it negate the benefits that you're trying to achieve on a social justice, environmental justice level? Um, I think it's very important to be mindful of different cultures and beliefs. 
values and respect folks. As students of a mostly middle income, it was hard for me at least to relate to a lot of the constituents that we serve, but you really have to try to be humble. The one that comes to mind is the Seattle Children's Play Garden, which is a garden providing the uh, infrastructure, the amenities for children um, who have uh, serious disabilities. It addresses not just physical access, but also the idea of connectivity to a greater community. Um, certainly one of the projects that for me was kind of a benchmark was a place called Chicano Park, which is in San Diego, which is a park that was built under a freeway that really broke apart a neighborhood, a, a Latino neighborhood. And they sort of reconstituted and healed the schism by creating this park underneath. And it does raise interesting issues is, is that social justice? I mean, it's not equal to in some sense. In some sense, it's more interesting, but it's crafted by the community to reclaim land that had been stolen from them in their eyes. And it's a beautiful project, but it came from the ground up, which the other example would be policy that comes from the top down to ensure, in fact, that they do have equal parks, that equal access to parks and equal uh, park space within the communities. That one really is more the community taking care of their own needs through a social justice action or activism. We wanted the site to be somewhere that people will come from the neighborhood and also people from outside the neighborhood who will see that here's another example of how green infrastructure can not only solve a problem on their own site because they were having flooding and they had other kind of like stormwater issues on their own property, but also the wider, like greater good of the Duwamish Valley. And I'm doing a project here called City of Faces. It was inspired by deterring youth violence and increasing positive energy in the neighborhood from a lot of shootings that happened in this neighborhood last summer. And the project is working with 30 youth in Southeast Seattle. They'll learn about birds, they'll learn about bird nesting, they'll pick a bird, and then we'll do a face cast and turn that into the front of a nest box for uh, the bird of their choice. And so it's kind of putting humans and nature in a blender, learning about kind of the innocence of the wild and just starting to understand the positive part and be part of a positive activity in their neighborhood. In reality, the potential is limitless. With landscape architecture as a foundation, you have the power to combat the injustices of the world. We have a clear choice. When both the ecology and marginalized communities bear the brunt of bad design, why not design for justice?